Alrighty, got my second match of the World Cup underway versus Maya Kuzuki, top player of Japan's B team. I don't know how many alternates are on Japan A, but I think this puts her somewhere between 5th and 7th overall amongst the Japanese players. What have we here? So there's no villages in the kingdom, but there is black market. So that means playing Black Market is going to be significant because you want to find some villages. I imagine this game might hinge a decent bit on that. If one player finds a bunch of villages and another one does not, well, that's good for the former. Other than that, the kingdom looks really strong. So you definitely want to build an engine. You got Inventor, Groundkeeper, Chapel, Great Thinning, Great Payload. So thinning is significant. Uh, building is important. And it's going to come down to finding those villages. My first intuition is Chapel Black Market. They collide. That's a little bit sad, but not a huge deal. Gets you an early Black Market play on a good shuffle. The other option would be something like Chapel Supplies, maybe delaying the Black Market slightly. Less of a downside in the case of collision. I think I like Chapel Black Market enough, though. And we're just going to hope to find those on separate hands, turn 3 and turn 4. I don't know why I have a Halloween-themed background at the moment. It's not Halloween. So, yeah, Chapel is the easy buy. Uh, the turn two choice is a little bit harder. Let's see what she goes with. I could even see Chariot Race, honestly. Like, Chariot Race is kind of a nothing buy, but with Chapel, that's kind of fine. Because then there's no scenario where you have a sad hand with both of your buys in the same hand. And you're unlikely to bottom deck Chapel if the other card you bought is a cantrip. Ride is not what I expected. I mean, that's even safer than Chariot Race, I guess. A zero long-term value, but really minimizing your chance of Chapel Bottom decking and maximizing your chance of lining up with some estates. Fair enough. I'm going to I'm gonna take the riskier play, which, just looking at this hand, probably is not paid off. <laughs> Definitely not uh, getting the good draw, which is Chapel and Black Market in two separate hands, turn three and turn four. I'm either going to collide them or... One of them is going to bottom deck, neither of which is a lovely outcome. All right, well, we're not trashing, apparently. Not this shuffle. It's going to be a lot less thin, but maybe I can find a village. No, I can't. These look like some really good cards to buy, however. Slays off the table. It's terminal. I don't have any villages yet, but Experiment from Black Market is basically the laboratory for three bucks because it can't return to the supply because there's no supply pile and when it's in the black market instead of in the actual supply. So you just stay with your deck. And Bounty Hunter is just an amazing thinner. It's one of these two. Deeply uncertain as to which. I'm gonna... Hmm. I'm gonna say experiment and supplies, I suppose. So would I keep a copper at a gain of supplies? I think the answer is no. So I should just trash three. I think like, if this were my turn three hand or something, like if I'd open chapel supplies, I think I would more strongly consider just trashing two and buying a supplies. But uh, the chapel having bottom deck, I think I'm going to be kind of desperate to get thin fast. Please don't bottom deck black market. I checked our standings, or history, basically, I, 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 I haven't played her a few times in the ladder, and I looked up the results. We played five times, and it's 3-2 my favor, which suggests with great certainty that I'll be up 3-2 after game five, but what happens in game six is anyone's guess. That's uncharted territory. Black market, please. Thank you. Still no villages. 
Sculpture seems great though. Gave me a lot of supplies. Just a quick ride, I guess. I think if they collide here, I'm probably playing Chapel one more time. And then after that, I think I can just forget about Chapel, even if I don't trash all my junk. Uh, she still does not have a black market, which seems really late to me. Now that I've got a sculpture in my deck, I'm a lot less enthused about buying supplies because I don't want the powder run out. Because sculpture gaining supplies is about the best thing the sculptor can do at the moment. When I don't have villages, I don't want to gain the other stuff with it. And so might as well spend my buys on ride and then sculpt the supplies. Village, please. Pretty please. Oh. Well, I got this early black market and it has not paid off with me at all. Uh, I, I would love an artisan a lot because gains grounding keepers. But that puts me pretty clearly over terminals. So I don't think I should buy at the moment. I think just treasury. Lighthouse could be nice. I mean, there's a legionary in the kingdom and you could find some nasty attacks on the black market. But I don't think I, either of those is a short term threat. Is she just skipping black market? Has she just got an inventor? Maybe she's got advanced knowledge. Maybe her power of introspection have told her there's just no villages in this black market deck anywhere. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think I believe in skipping black market here. That being said, my black market is not doing a whole lot for me at the moment. Okay, this, this time, this time we're gonna find a village, like a great village. I'm gonna pull a king's court or a recruiter. Nope. <laughs> what is this? Oh. Given how much money I have and only a single buy, these are basically free. And Warf and Bridge Troll are both amazing cards, and yet I barely want them because I can't play them. And like I'm, like, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna buy one of these and it's gonna sit in my deck being junk for a bit until I can find a village and actually make use of it. I think Bridge Troll. Is that true actually? I mean, there's Inventor for cost production. Maybe I want Warf for the draw. Groundskeeper. One of these days, I'm going to find a village, and then my turns are going to do so many things. How can I play Black Market? Okay, so none of the top 12 cards of the Black Market deck had a village, but there's still 48 to go. Do I want a free silver? I think I don't even want a free silver at this point in the game. Like, I've got more money than I know what to do with, and limited ability to draw right now. I was really severely concerned my black marker was going to be on bottom there. Okay, I'm going to pass up on the free silver. Village? No, what is this? <laughs> Come on, please. <laughs> Spice Merchant can get rid of these last few coppers non-terminally. Fisherman's just like an extra supplies. Pawn is plus buy. Pawn might actually be the best. Plus buy sounds like it could be useful right now. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, so we're 15 cards into the deck and not a single village. If she picks up a black market now and then plays it and gets a village, I'm going to be so incredibly upset. <laughs> I 
It looks like she's just skipping black market, which seems bizarre to me. Like, I don't, I don't know what the odds are that the top fifteen cards of the black market deck had zero villages, but that's got to be really low odds. I, I don't think that happens all too often. I'm not really drawing my deck here. It's okay though, because I'm about to find a village. Actually, this is probably just card action. I want to find more supplies if I can, which I can't. So never mind, that was a waste. Okay, that's not a good village, but we'll take what we can get at the moment. <laughs> uh, shuffle that in. In. More chariot races, I guess. All right, getting places. Village number one acquired. And it, it does have a snowball effect, because once you get villages, then you can play more black markets, so you can search quicker through the rest of the deck, and then it, it goes well from there. It's a real simplistic stack of supplies and chariot races and groundskeepers deck. I'm pretty sure this should not win most of the time. But time might be a little bit slow to get the ball rolling on what I'm doing, just given the uh, amount of time I spent with a single terminal action card. So this turn, I'll use the end, I think, to play Black Market and Wharf, and that frees up uh, terminal space for the following turn, even if I don't find a second village. Then next turn, maybe I play Black Market Chapel. Get rid of those last few coppers. My deck's nice and clean. Ooh, victory point. Don't need Sculptor, don't want Silver at the moment. Going places. Uh, I think action and coin, probably. I've got the plus five from Wharf now. I don't think there's anything super valuable down here for me to draw. It's a chapel and... I actually have no idea what the last card is, to be honest. Probably a chariot race or something. I don't think it's anything worth drawing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the coin. It's hard to determine exactly how much money I need, not knowing what I'm going to reveal from the black market deck. But I don't think I have enough money to productively use three buys. Silk Merchant is, it, it's a village. Uh, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel here in terms of sources of plus action. Uh, I mean, Silk Merchant is objectively the strongest card in the game in general, but as far as giving you actions, it's not amazing. You get one when you, you buy it, one when you trash it, uh, and that's it. I don't think I want to lower piles anymore because like, she's not building a deck that's going to prosper long term. So I think I'm going to leave Chariot Race at 5. I don't, I don't really need a merchant, but I, I don't want to lower Chariot Races. I want to give myself time to find villages and do things. So if all goes well, I think this turn I am chapeling three coppers and a silk merchant. I am playing Black Market and probably gaining a silver off a of Sculptor if I can swing that as well. Because I got a merchant, I probably want at least one silver. <laughs> Don't have Groundskeeper on top. Please and thank you. Well, I'm probably not actually drawing my whole deck, am I? So that plan of chapeling a lot of cards might have been unlikely to occur. It might be worth discarding some supplies to get a good chapel playoff here. I think so. It leaves me a few horses next turn, but if I manage to trash these coppers, I won't need as many horses the following turn anyway. Oh, am I drawing my deck? I am drawing my deck. Wow, look at this deck. What a high-quality deck. Die, Silk Merchant, die. 
Uh, all right. Well, Lackeys is a that's a village. Again, strong card, weak village. Only two villagers total, but we'll take what we can get here. Storyteller also is great here because it's strong non-terminal draw, which is of course good when you don't have a lot of terminal space. I think the answer is lackeys. And I should probably get to playing a second black market now. I'm really on the clock here. I, I can't just leave this, the groundskeeper pile uncontested, so that's going to run pretty fast. Uh, and then it's just the chariot race pile that's left, and um, she's going to eat through that. And so I, I got to get things rolling. ASAP. I don't know how many chariot races I have. I seem to be losing the point split pretty badly. I think that's just because she's got more of them. I have like two to her four. The good news is, I mean, she's capped at two gains total, and no good way to increase that because she doesn't have villages, doesn't have black market. So it's not going to be exceptionally easy, I don't think, for her to score and also lower piles. Because anytime she's gaining victory cards, she's going to have to not be gaining Groundkeeper or Cherry Race. So if I take a province or two, then that's going to help delay the pile out, because then that spins up her limited gain scoring. I don't really want to be buying provinces at the moment, though. Stop having groundskeepers on top. That is incredibly disrespectful. I deserve chariot race points, too. Let's not hog them all. I don't think I have a single card in my deck that can beat Groundkeeper in a Chariot Race. Uh, what are those bottom cards? A Merchant and a Wharf. Well, I do kind of want to draw the Wharf. Actually, do I, how badly do I really want to draw the Wharf? I mean, I, I could just spend my terminal face on Black Markets. I think I probably want to play the Wharf. I mean, it's a good card. I can play the black market first, though, and then maybe draw, hmm. So if I play the war first, I get to draw my merchant, which you got to play the merchant before this over if you want the bonus. If I, if I play the black market, I could not play the silver so as to avoid that, but then I play the supplies and then I top deck the horses prematurely. I have to draw back through them, and that means fewer horses next turn. I think we're going to take the risk on hopefully finding a, a nice village or something. Not a nice village, but a village. Conclave it is. <laughs> we're, we're not pulling the strongest villages of all time in this game. You gotta work with what you got. Okay, here we go. Gonna pull a recruiter right now. Diplomat, is that, does that even count? Can I reasonably get my deck down to four cards or fewer to trigger Diplomat's effect? Mm, I'm not sure if I believe that I can. I... No, I, I I don't think I can reasonably trigger, trigger Diplomat's effect, can I? Maybe? I mean, this turn I can't. But if I, if I use the Black Market to play the supplies early, then I play Diplomat. I mean, that'll trigger the Diplomat effect and get me an extra village. At the cost of, then I'm top-decking a bunch of horses mid-turn instead of at the end of the turn. It's really just a question of how badly I value the risk of... of convoluted village. I mean, honestly, probably a decent amount, right? I should probably buy it. My special is given how much money I've got, right? Can't hurt. Well, I mean, can't hurt to stop guard otherwise. We'll see if I, I can manage to trigger that. And 
And I'm wondering if I should just play one more black market here. Oh, you know what I could do maybe? What if I uh, just mule these a bit? Mule will get me to diplomat, which will trigger. Aha! We found a way after all. And I should mule this. Why am I saying mule? Mole. One letter off. Uh, I didn't, I didn't want to leave the chapel top deck. That's not a good place for chapel to be. Village. Walled village is a village. Captain's also a village. Ooh, hello. Both of those are really appealing. Captain's got to be better, right? And Captain's only village every other turn, but it's strong every turn. Mm, I think I want Captain. And let's draw to it. Better to mole the horse to get to Captain because it doesn't spin the horse, so that horse will still be on my deck next turn. And let's just keep searching the Black Market deck, I think. We're going to find all the villages now. Never mind. I don't. I mean, I would probably take the Grand Market, but you can't spend coffers during your buy or during your action phase. And Noble Brigand does not sound remotely valuable. And Journeyman, I don't think I have the terminal space for or the need for. So let's just not buy that. And probably scoring time. Two estates, I think. I don't want to get too behind on points. Oh, Diplomat, you're going to be difficult to activate, but we'll find a way. Not sure what I do with this captain at the top of my shuffle. I was thinking about bishoping the estate, but I've also got the wharf in place. So even if I bishop the estate, that doesn't necessarily get me down to four cards or fewer. Diplomat's got to be in a, a, a starting hand of four or fewer to end up with five or fewer after playing it to get the plus two actions. I feel like I'm in a good enough spot, though. I think she's just too gain limited to be threatening a whole lot. Like piles look low, but versus an opponent who can only gain two cards per turn, they're really not that low. That's there's like two straight turns of scoring no points if she wants to empty cherry races and groundskeeper. And if she has to spend some of those gains on victory points to keep a points lead, that gives me a decent amount of time to catch up with the villages I have finally found. Province, yeah. Yeah, she's just in full-on scoring mode. Okay, can I reasonably activate Diplomat? I think so. What if I... Yeah, if, if I bishop the estate and then play the black market, I, I spend a villager, but then at the end of that, my hand is four cards or fewer. So that's probably what I'm doing here. Play bishop. Not sure if this is going to be friendly or not. Looks like she's got nothing to trash. This Black Market deck is rather underwhelming. These cards all suck. <laughs> I don't want any of that. Don't buy. I'm running a little low on villagers. I'd love to find, a, like, even a Lurker actually would be something great to pull from the Black Market because then you could Lurk that Silk Merchant back and gain villagers that way. That would be kind of nice. <laughs> like, I, I am actually still kind of over terminals, aren't I? If I want to play on my Black Markets and such. Drawing. <laughs> A 
I'm probably going to do the, the horsey spinny thing again, just judging by this, if I find anything of value. Ooh, scrap. Scrap sounds good. I would not mind killing this chapel off. I mean, it doesn't sound amazing or anything. It's not like, oh, wow, scrap, I'm going to win this game now. But it seems worth taking, especially when I've got a severe excess of money. And kill the chapel this turn, hopefully, and then probably kill the lackeys next turn. Ooh, now these are some good cards. I mean, Royal Carrot is a village. A double village, actually, because not only is it a village itself, I could call it on a village. But that's still worse than Outpost. That's like a free extra turn. Can't say no to that. So that means even, even once I go through the Black Market deck, there's at least one village still hiding out there to find on the second go-round. Now we just repetitively horse around the deck. Okay, here we go. Uh, I, I think with the Outpost, I should be close to a guaranteed win here. I think just action and... Do I want plus buy? Maybe I want plus buy to score more points. I could also take a horse if I thought drawing was a concern, which it might be. I think I like the horse. I'm going to take two duchies. I'm not actually super jazzed about lowering estates, I don't think. Because estates could become the new third pile. I think groundskeeper than estates. If I lower those too much. So I'm just going to take two duchies. And this is actually probably a very realistic world in which I uh, could have emptied estates and groundskeepers myself on this turn, like between last turn and this turn. But I don't think I want to risk that. Like, I, the three card starting hand, there's also a decent chance of dudding and stuff. Case in point, this deck is kind of going nowhere fast. I think Black Market now. Goodbye, Final Villager. Still no villages. Do I have a horse in play? I do, so I can't Conclave the horse. So we're just conclaving the sculptor. Not that that's a particularly amazing play. Stop having ground. Key. Oh, ha ha! I scored anyway. Oh, I have a card costing more than five. Now you're in trouble. I guess I can try to play on. See if I get any further. That's basically the same thing. Village? No village. Transmogrify does not sound bad. Duchy Estate. I don't like the way my durations are aligned. Ideally, what I would really want is to be playing the Captain and the Wharf on the non-outpost turn. So the outpost turn, which starts with three cards otherwise, has a lot more reliability, having a Wharf and a Captain coming into play, and then avoids awkwardness like that last turn. But it's not like it's worth not playing the Captain and the Wharf to make that happen. So I played Black Market 17 times. There are 60 cards in the Black Market deck. It means there's nine cards left unrevealed. Still room for a few villages. Plus there's a royal carriage in there that I have not acquired yet. Although the cards will get reshuffled. So that can be anywhere in the Black Market deck once it reshuffles. No guarantee whatsoever that I get back around to that in a reasonable period of time. I do think it's very likely I might just win this turn. 
I think four estates and a groundskeeper seems pretty doable across this turn and out post turn. Maybe even not factoring that post turn. Ho ho! Can't tap groundskeepers forever. At some point, the supplies are going to come home to roost. So I only need five gains here. I've got two buys already with the wharf. Pawn is three, scrap is four, sculptor is five. I, I think I probably got the win in hand. Seems likely at least. Card action by coin horse. Action by There's a village. I'm pretty sure none of the, <laughs> here, here they all are. I don't think any of this is likely to matter, but nice to know the villages were gonna be there eventually. How many groundskeepers have in play? I probably didn't get the win. Wait, let me just check. I had three groundskeepers in play. I need to score eight points. Yeah, so if I just sculpt an inventor, invent an estate, then I would need one, two, three coins, seven coins. Yeah. Let's stop playing one. I don't even need to find the outpost. <laughs> Oh, actually, I guess Duchy and Groundskeeper is also a doable pile at this point. I mean, not not at, at precise at this point, but I could have done Duchy and Groundskeeper this turn if I'd done that slightly differently. I'm getting kind of laggy, though. This is annoying. I think there's an important lesson here about intellectual property. She tried to do the nice, responsible thing and invent all of her own stuff, but in the end, you can't really get around the black market. I haven't even looked at them. I just, <laughs> scrap this seems clearly correct. I definitely clicked that without thinking. Uh, and I still feel confident in that. I mean, what are you going to open? Silver tunnel. A lot of good fours and fives here. This looks like a pretty straightforward thing for the most part, right? Smithy for draw, Thurnum and Ironmonger for villages. I I wonder, act, actually, hmm. I don't think Tunnel comes up at all. I mean, you could trigger it with Ironmonger, but not in a reliable way. I think the question really is the payload. Sacred Grove is not bad here because it's plus buy and it's thronable, so it synchronizes well with throne room. Baron seems worse. This trashing estates here is rather easy. I think the big open question is to what extent do you play toward the priest mega turn? It might not be so hard to set up here because you get some additional money off of scrap, like you throw in a priest and then every scrap you play scores you four points, not four points, four money. So, you know, maybe if your deck had a bunch of scraps and silvers and stuff. Well, the scrapping silver is actually, that's not self-sustaining. Like, if you scrap silver for a card action silver, that's, 
that's like a ruined village effect. Because you're only getting one draw out of that. Two stop cards. So you, like you can't just trivially have a bunch of scraps in your deck without it eating through stuff, but it's not a huge deal. Uh, Silo seems great here. <laughs> I'm really glad I bought Silo seeing this hand. I mean, realistically, I'd have a, a, an entirely distinct shuffle if I'd bought another card. But uh, Scrap and Four Coppers is just like a game-losing turn three draw for me. Here's actually a great draw. So those bottom cards have a copper and an estate. I could take card coin. It has a risk of hitting four. Hitting four here is wonderful. A lot of the best cards cost four. That's a 50-50 shot. I could take card horse. Know that I'm definitely not hitting four. Just buy a patrician or something, which is unlikely to have much value, but means I'm definitely going to have a horse in my deck next turn. I could uh, take Silver Horse. Do I want a Silver? I think I like Card Coin. 50 50 shot hitting four, which is the good outcome. I got the bad outcome, but the bad outcome still involves getting an estate off the top of my deck, which means I'm going to find Scrap and then. Uh, Hopefully see more coppers on top for silos. So I think this is still not so bad. Do I want a second scrap? Sure. I feel like Priest is going to come up here, actually. I, I, I think this is going to be Priest Megaturn-esque at the very least. Here, I think I'm just doing Silver Horse. Well, let's see. Those top cards are a scrap and two coppers. I could do Card Coin again for a two thirds shot of hitting four. That actually sounds pretty good. If I draw the scrap, I'm sad. I don't want to do Card Action. There's a one third chance that turns out great, but a two thirds chance I'm just blowing this turn. I think I'll, I'll do Card Coin. I want a four. Please don't draw a scrap. Thank you. What has she done? Scrap silos, yeah, predictable. And then, ooh, I'm actually in the lead. She did not have a good turn three, that's unfortunate. I mean, with silos, you're pretty likely to find scrap turn three, and she still managed not to, which is unfortunate for one of us. That bottom card is a, I, I wanna leave the copper on top. With silos, you actually want coppers top decked. So I think I'm actually not playing both of these scraps, because I can't play both scraps and hit four, can I? If I do action coin, then I have four, but then I kill a copper, I'm back down to three. Yeah, I think I'm just doing coin horse here. And then priest already? Get rid of these coppers? Throne room? Priest sounds good. Throne room is actually great with horses because horses, it's like a, it's a laboratory the turn you play it. And if you throw it, you're getting that effect twice. So it's a pretty outsized effect for throwing it otherwise through the other card. Like a throne room used on a horse is a lost city in essence. And that's a good card. Uh, happy to review. Oh, this is actually great because I can play the priest before I play the scrap. Oh boy, we so much money. You're rolling in the dough. Card by that bottom card is surely a copper, right? I'm sure it's a copper. So I'm gonna have seven money. So I could do coin and hit eight money. It's probably correct. Hmm. I could also just do, like, buy horse silver and buy a patrician and a four instead of two fours. And I've got a horse in my deck and another good scrap target to scrap again next turn. Maybe that's better. 
then I ideally do the same thing over again where I play the priest first, then scrap the silver, and then good things happen. Let's do patrician bone room. Oh, this is a... <laughs> Normally, this would be like a really sad hand to see, but this is, in fact, the exact opposite, because seeing all your coppers on top means you're going to get to cycle through a ton of them with silos. And they very likely to have a good turn. I am not unhappy to see four coppers on top. I think it's already incredibly likely I win this, and I, I don't think it's due to any difference in uh, quality of play. I'm player one, and I've had very good draws, whereas she seems to have had at least one very bad shuffle on turn three. Oh, village. Maybe I should have held out for the horse, but that would have been unnecessarily risky, I think. So, do I draw with the horse? Do I scrap the horse? I probably draw with the horse, right? Triggering the shuffle is wonderful because it top decks all the coppers again. And then I'm happy again. So, I said, I said draw with the horse. By draw with the horse, I meant kill the horse and take plus one card. Uh, those aren't really the same thing, are they? Uh, so I got seven money here, so maybe just card buy coin, and then two fours. I didn't want. I mean, it, it's getting close to time for a sacred grove for Bible plus buy, so I can stop using the scrap. So what if I do just like card buy horse, and then I do. Patrician Sacred Grove, maybe that's better. Well, no, if I do card by coin, I can I can actually do, wait, just seven. Now, I'll have eight, actually, because I'll draw a copper. So if I do card by coin, I'm hitting nine, which is like Sacred Grove plus Throne Room. There you go. That that's what you want to see. Four coppers on top. I I was kind of forgetting there for a bit that drawing a copper actually gives you one coin. I was triggering that shuffle entirely just to put the coppers on top, but it came with a nice beneficial side effect of having enough money to buy a four and a five. I think this turn it's probably getting to be smithy time pretty soon. I don't really have a whole lot of draw on my deck. Like, scrapping things to gain horses isn't really draw, because, you know, best case scenario, you have a scrap and then a thing that you scrapped, which is two cards, and then you get plus one card and plus one horse, which is function of plus one card. So even scrapping something and taking plus card plus horse out of it is only draw neutral. But scrap plus throne room is actually draw. Not if you throw in the scrap, but if you scrap something and throw in the horse... The scrap plus the horse themselves are draw neutral, but then the throne room is like a lost city, and you're actually netting draw out of that. But I've, I've technically got draw on my deck, but it's not like a whole lot of draw. It's kind of convoluted. Well, scrapping things and then throwing horses. Realistically, you want to draw a smithy here. I don't have that yet. Yeah, I am drawing my deck, but that's mostly just because I'm managing to top deck the coppers and then cycle back through them. So like I'm not really drawing, drawing so much as just cycling through the cards I don't like. I think we go Throne, Throne, Ironmonger here. Probably right, yeah. That feels correct. Uh, maybe that was incorrect. That bottom card is a horse, isn't it? Is it a horse? I actually don't know. Maybe it's not a horse. It's not a horse. I, didn't, I didn't take a horse. Never mind. False alarm. Mountain's Gift is not exactly what I wanted to see. That being said, uh, most of the good boons would also not be like necessarily good boons because with Sacred Grove, your opponent gets them too. Really, the only great boons to get from Sacred Grove are Fields and Forest Gift because of the ones that don't benefit the opponent. Do I want to top deck something? No, I 
don't. If Moon's gift is not very good. If I top deck something, I couldn't trigger a shuffle, and I kind of do want to trigger a shuffle. This didn't work out great because it's not letting me play the priest before the scrap. I was hoping to get C's gift or something there. But still pretty fine, all things considered. I'm exceedingly likely to draw a copper. If I draw a silver, it's probably not different. I'm probably just priesting either way. Which means I'm going to have nine money. Which is, hmm. What am I doing with nine money? Maybe I'm taking coin, actually. Because I don't, I don't think I need another five right now. I don't need to archive this deck, I don't think. And it's too early for a second sacred grove. So maybe just card coin horse and then... Throne Smithy Trition. Wait, this this mountain's gift actually just kind of ruins everything, doesn't it? Yeah, that wow, this mountain's gift is remarkably bad. Ew. Uh so if I didn't have mountain's gift, I would have five cards down there, and the trigger shuffle would have four cards down there, which means I would top deck a copper, or four coppers, and one other thing. And then I would discard all the coppers back to the bottom. This means I'm going to have five cards top deck, which I mean, I will top deck the coppers, but I won't trigger a shuffle, which means the coppers, once I discard them with silos, are going straight back into my deck. Man, I... <laughs> oh, Mountain's Hex, you strike once again. I, I wish it were optional. I don't, I don't. I do not understand why Mountain's Gift is not an optional thing, but uh, such is life. Ah, shit, 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 shit. That was a misclick. I meant to be Patrician Throne Room Smithy. I. <laughs> please, Maya. <laughs> please. Oh, given this is actually gonna be kind of important. I think. Yeah, I probably like in the absence of mountain sex. I probably could have. May do one more turn with the smithy and not been so bad. But just like this is a a much, much worse hand than if the silver weren't there. Because instead of having four coppers all go to the very bottom of the shuffle, now I'm I'm gonna have four coppers dispersed somewhere into the shuffle, which is much more likely to cause a dud if I don't have a good amount of draw in this deck. <laughs> this is a pretty good set of things to draw, though. I'd love to throw in a horse. But yeah, like look at this. Look at this hand. This is this is what happens when you uh, don't get to bottom deck the coppers. Oh look, Sacred Grove doing something productive. I can top deck Smithy here, which should be best. I still can't play the, the priest before the scrap, so it's not like this has really saved the turn in full. I'm not getting quite as much out of this turn as I could, but it definitely could have gone worse. Gonna go card, coin, horse. Still don't think I want more silvers at the moment. But maybe I didn't need the horse. Maybe I could have taken a silver there. Pro 
probably second take a Grove time. Second Smithy. And Trishan. The priest stuff is kind of tricky because, like, to make full use of it, you'll want plus buy. No, 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 never mind. I was about to say something that was incorrect. I was going to say, well, you, you got to throw in the sacred groves to get plus buy anyway. Now I'm considering how much I really need these sacred groves. Maybe, maybe you could build a sustainable deck with just priests and scraps because the scraps do give plus buy. I guess theoretically at least. And so you don't necessarily need the sacred groves for plus buy. The, the tricky part for the priest deck is keeping the priests fed, because you, you trash a bunch of stuff in that world. But that scales up in an, uh, I don't know, exponential, quadratic. It scales up super duperly, uh, basically. And so you end up with a lot of money at the end of that. You can buy all the provinces at once. Fascinating. Did she just pass up on a free patrician? Are the piles low enough for that to be a con- oh, there, There's no free pile threat. And mate, I don't think my deck could even do five Emporia plus three Thronerms. That's only two piles. I don't know why you wouldn't take a free patrician there. I mean, patrician is kind of a nothing card, but I would not mind having just an extra nothing card in my deck. It's potentially a target for throwing them if you otherwise need a village effect that a handful of terminals. It's a good priest target on the final turn. You could scrap it if you need. I maybe should have thrown the priest here. Not sure if that was better. Like here, actually, I think I'm gonna scrap a patrician. I don't really need to kill these coppers. I honestly might want coppers on my deck at this point. I should probably consider buying coppers if I have extra buys to, to feed priest. So turning a patrician into I don't know, a horse and a silver probably seems good. Game that. I think. Two priests is probably enough to generate enough money to win with a bunch of scraps. Like, thrown two priests, trash four things, and scrap a bunch of stuff. That's going to generate two, four, six, eight on its own. So that's like 20 money right there. And then every scrap play that I play after that generates eight more money. Yeah, that should be plenty to score enough provinces. So I, I think the goal is just, I'll buy a second priest on the final turn. Is what I want to do. In the meantime, let's just add a bunch more engine pieces. Now, now I'm wondering about Baron actually. Maybe Baron is better than Sacred Grove. Because I don't if I plan on getting oodles of money with priests, I don't really need the the coins from Sacred Grove. So maybe I just I play like I throw in Baron for plus two buy and plus zero, but it gets me No oh, thank you. I maybe could have swung discarding there. If I had like thrown thrown Smithy in hand, I probably would have discarded for gold. Uh I think that I need to risk having some random dud, though. I'm not certain I'll draw. But if I, I, gain, I play Baron to gain two estates, and that's just two more things to scrap. I do not need planes gift.
Uh, sure, I'll take the plus card. Oh, <laughs> well, if these had been in a different order, maybe if, if C's gift had happened first and I could have drawn the smithy, well, then Sky's gift would have been awful appealing. Uh, gold is, if nothing else, a pretty good scrap target. Scrapping gold is really satisfying because you don't even have to do the little menu thing where you just click through what you want because you're just necessarily getting all six of them. And so you just play scrap, click gold, and then it just resolves itself for you. There's no, no choice to be had. This match is also happening <laughs> unreasonably early in the morning. But scheduling a match between the U.S. and Japan is not the easiest. I'm pretty sure this is like 10 o'clock at night for her. Twenty-two. Oh well, she's actually getting up there in points, ain't she? Ah, uh, is that safe? I'm not sure that's safe. So, I mean, eight points is a little bit awkward, actually, because Emporium plus Province is just too few to win. So, I would need a lot of plus buy here, wouldn't I? The easiest pile out would be two thrones, one emporium, five scraps, a province, and an estate. <laughs> that baron is looking a lot better right now. Hmm. I was thinking I had two more turns. I didn't think this was going to be the final turn. I would have added, you know, different set of cards and second priest probably. Now I'm considering whether I should go for the win here. Can my deck get one, two, three? Eight, nine, ten buys is what I would need. Ooh. I've got a lot of throne rooms. And a lot of sacred groves. So if I if I if I don't throw in any of the plus buy cards, I've got three groves, is that right? Yeah. So I got one buy, plus three from grove is four, plus two from scraps is six. Now, there are good boons that can give me extra gains. We're towards the top of a shuffle. So if, I, if I had thrown Sacred Grove, I'd see a, a big chunk of the boons, and Earth's Gift and Forest's Gift have not been seen yet. And so there's a good chance I'd get one extra buy out of that. Hmm. I'm thinking Kylie I might be doable. And the money situation, this costs 15, plus 8 is 23, plus 5 is 28, plus 10 is 38 money. Ooh, that's also a lot of money. Hmm. I am quite unsure about this. So if I, yeah, like I, if I'm throwing the priest, that's one less plus buy because that's one sacred group I'm not throwing. Mm. How many thrones do I have? I only have four throne rooms. Yeah, I think I'm not playing for a. Uh, a win this turn. It might be there, but at best it's real close. Maybe I'll see what boons I get. And that might influence things. Oh, did I get Forest Gift? Earth gift, I meant. Uh, well, sh nah, maybe that changes things again. If I gain a scrap, yeah, I mean, gaining a scrap here is like plus two more gains. Take a scrap and we'll see where this goes. Uh, do not top deck either of those, I don't think. 
Ideally, I don't want to play the scrap until after the priest. I'm also rather low on actions, aren't I? Ew. Okay, well, yeah, so I do not think I'm winning this turn. I didn't realize it was, it was this low on villages. Like, I think I would really, really need to play the uh, priest before the scrap to have any chance of getting enough money to win here. I don't think that's occurring. Don't I? I guess this bottom card is an ironmonger, isn't it? That's just an awkward spot for it to be in. So, I guess it's actually not that important that I play the priest this turn. I don't mind having extra copper as a target sitting around. So, maybe just action, silver horse, then play the grove. Leave the iron on top for next turn. Oh, right, I throned this. Why did I throw in this? I don't know why I throw in this. That was probably dumb. <laughs> I, I should have just scrapped the silver and played the the uh, grove twice. All right, well, Smithy, I guess you're dying. Sorry. Uh, I, mean, I I probably could do undo this if I really wanted to. There's no information or anything, but this was just me being dumb. Not this quick. <laughs> More buys or more coins? More coins, probably. Six buys feels like enough buys. I don't know. I don't know how many coppers I want to add. I I think my idea of playing next turn does involve throwing two priests. So maybe I do want to add some more coppers. Why did I take plus action? I don't know what I'm doing this turn. I'm doing silly things. I had no use for plus action here. Uh... All right, no problem. Also, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure I I've misplayed that last minute or so in like five different ways. I don't, I don't why why did I even want a gold? I don't really need it as a scrap target. I don't think, but fifth I should have counted how much money I was gonna have. Fifteen is a lot worse than sixteen. I could have bought four fours here. Um, I'm not sure I really want another scrap. That lowers piles a lot. And I feel like I kind of need to add another smithy. Not just another smithy, another throne room to have enough actions. Well, let me think about her gain situation. Maybe I, maybe I can afford one more scrap. Mm. So she's got... Let's see that. So I've got five of the thrones. So she's got four throne rooms. Two sacred groves. There's six scraps that I counted for. Two are in the trash. Two are in my deck. So she got two scraps. Hmm. So two grows, two scraps, and a bunch of thrones. If I took a a scrap here, she only need to do one. That's not a huge number of gains. I don't think I can afford to take another scrap. Yeah, that that gold discard is just looking even dumber now. Oh well. <laughs> now I'm just kind of thinking Ironmonger nothing. I made some mistakes there. Which, if I blow this game, is really sad. Because I, I definitely had much better draws. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had much worse play. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure going into this last turn or two, I had a huge lead. And I feel like I have kind of thrown that away. 
If she can't pile here, which I think is possible but far from certain, then I'm probably in an okay spot. She's unsure whether she's back. I have returned. It does not appear anything has transpired. I'm sure what's happening is she's calculating whether or not she's got a pile out because like, this, this number of gains looks possible but uncertain, especially with the, the Sacred Grove situation. Actually, I think... Actually, I'm not sure how many Sacred Groves she can play. <laughs> Oh goodness me. Oh no. Dogs. Dogs are invading. Please, please calm down. I, I see you. There are two dogs at the house at the moment. I am a uh, dog sitting my cousin's dog. And they, they, oh goodness, they definitely feed off each other energy wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, sorry, I'm so ready. Uh, when did I do? Please, please stop. <laughs> I, I had forgotten, but uh, her dog's got this annoying habit, <laughs> which is if you're at the computer, he kind of knows that nudging your, your arm while you're trying to use the mouse is a good way to get your attention. It's a, a bad way to uh, effectively use the computer. Sun's Gift. If I get a turn, at the very least, this is definitely lining me up to have... A successful draw. I need to go outside. All right. They are behind the gate. Hopefully, nothing gets destroyed. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh no, they're just scoring, that's fine. You, you're allowed to get points, you're just not allowed to pile out. I want to line up as many thrones as I can, because chaining thrones is like a free extra village. Like, throne is a village in itself, but then any throne rooms you're able to play. From another throne room, there's like an additional village effect on top of the normal throne village effect. I think now I do the thing. Do, do, do. Okay, chained all the thrones. And so now I think priest on the coppers. I got a priest down there, don't I? How many throne rooms do I have left to resolve? It's hard to tell when the cards don't stay in play. So I've played a smithy, played a horse. Is that it? I have a bunch of throne rooms left to resolve. So I think if I thrown this horse, I'm likely to find the other priest, in which case I can throw in both priests, right? Yeah, I've only I have five throne rooms to resolve. I've only used two of them on Smithy and Horse, so I think this gives me a pretty good shot of is it on the bottom? I do have two priests, right? I I got a second priest last turn. I just, I discarded it, didn't I? Yeah, I just I, I just bottom decked it. Okay, well that's how that's gonna be then. Uh this should probably still be enough money, right? 
And this just means the scraps are making six per instead of uh, eight per, but it's probably enough. So would I rather throw in the scrap or the sacred grove? If I throw in the scrap, I'm getting an extra scrap play, which is good. But it means I'm playing that scrap before the second priest, which means it's making less money for me. So a single scrap play after priest is six. Two before priest is eight. I think a sacred grove is more viable than that. Oh, mountain's gift. Ooh, actually, flame skip not, might not be a bad boon to see right now. Sure, I'll kill a silver. Okay, so now let's take... I would get to scrap a gold. Ooh. So I'm pretty likely to not uh, fail. Actually, no, I'm, I'm pretty guaranteed that here, I think. Uh, I wasn't wanting to draw this. Like, I think the worst case scenario was silver on top followed by horse, in which case the will-o'-wisp draws the silver and then doesn't draw the other will-o'-wisp, and then I have no additional draw in my hand, but I could take plus card off of one of these scraps if I really needed to. This is probably going to be enough, right? I don't need buy or anything. So it should probably just be silver coin horse. And then we do card coin horse. And I believe 54 is more than 48. There we go. Okay, well, I tried hard to botch it at the end there, but not badly enough to overcome my rather advantageous early draws. What have we here? Interesting. A lot, a lot of attacks. We got Enchantress, Catapult, Werewolf. Village is kind of expensive with Border Village. Sheepdog can be activated by Expand or Artisan. Or Catapulting Rocks actually would activate Sheepdog. Or there was a way to get to the rocks pile. This looks tricky. Here. You, you definitely have to build here. It, this deck can end up doing a lot when you expand a bunch of things into provinces. The tricky part is a lot of the important engine pieces seem pretty expensive. Actually, most mostly the border villages. Six is a big number. And the attacks here seem pretty painful in the early game. So getting to six is not a trivial matter. What are we doing? One idea is maybe double catapult into fool's golds, and then you take two or three fool's golds, and you're probably hitting six anytime and you line two of those up, provided you have at least one other copper in hand. Uh, that's probably best, isn't it? I mean, I want to get trashed early. I mean, I guess then again, well, fool's gold also is kind of nice with your own catapults, because you don't need to hit a big number to afford it. It also kind of mitigates the, the effectiveness of the attack, doesn't it? Because even if you attack them, like normally a, a catapult attack leaves them hitting other two or three. Like if they just go down to three and then they catapult something, they're probably hitting two that turn. But Fool's Gold means that doesn't even stop them from buying something productive. They could buy Fool's Gold on that turn. So now I'm unsure how much the catapult attack matters. I think it's still worth thinning though, right? I want sheepdogs as well, but sheepdogs aren't going to be important, I don't think, until I've got artisan and or expand on my deck to activate them. Because there's going to be moats that I can't play. Enchantress could, I mean, like, silver enchantress could maybe get you to a big number early on. I think 
I'd maybe more strongly consider Enchantress Silver if I were player one, where the Enchantress attack is more likely to hit their first shuffle for their first reshuffle. Uh, as player two, I think. Please play your Enchantress. Enchant me. I want to be enchanted. Thank you. Ha ha. I'm actually not sure. That, like, I don't need to hit a higher number here. I'm going to buy full school no matter what. But at the very least, it gets me one card further into my deck. And I probably do want to attack them. Let's see. It's, it might make a difference. So they they had most, actually, I yeah, guarantee they, they had an Enchantress and three coppers in this last hand. Maybe there's a chance they had Enchantress and four coppers in the last hand and just didn't play the fourth copper. Uh, but at the very least, there's some estates down here. So they've got four coppers and a silver. So they're likely to hit six. I think this attack matters. If their estates, because they got at least two estates up here. If they're both in the starting hand, this attack does nothing. But there's a chance that maybe they bottom decked an estate, in which case they have to discard a copper, in which case they're hitting five instead of six, and five looks a whole lot worse than six. Please hit five. Ha ha, got him. Yeah, so uh, what this suggests to me is they had an estate on bottom, so they must have discarded copper plus estate, which means they would have hit six otherwise. I guess the other possibility that could result in this is they might have just had enchantress plus four coppers in the turn three hand, in which case they attacked did nothing, but they were just not going to hit six no matter what. Obviously, if the attack, for whatever reason, were definitely not going to matter, then I'd rather trash an estate than a copper, because the estate's the worst card for your deck. Yeah, five does look so much worse than six. You don't... I was just about to say you don't really want a werewolf, but apparently you do want a werewolf. <laughs> okay, uh, you do you. Here we go. This is big enough. Even if I got attacked here with their catapult, I would be hitting six. Uh, so I could buy province. Uh, I gotta get those province buys in early before they get fool's gold from their deck, otherwise they could react to and gain golds. That being said, I think I'm not gonna do that. So, I think it's really for Artisan, uh, that'd be pretty over-terminal. I think it's between Border Village and Expand. I think Expand? Turning Coppers into Sheepdogs sounds good. Turning Estates into also probably Sheepdogs. Sounds good. Sounds like it's expand. Please draw me a catapult. There's a one third shot here. Very sad. In fact, I mean, there's a good chance I'll be sad, but I will be sad if uh, I don't draw the catapult. I want to trash. I. That attack does not make me sad at all. I was probably just going to buy Fool's Gold here no matter what. But this attack could potentially hurt. Ho, 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 ho. Better to be lucky than good. I'm not sure if I want a fourth Fool's Gold. I don't think I plan on getting Trade Root anytime soon. And I think three Fool's Golds is enough to hit... The relevant price points that I want most of the time. So I think this is probably just Vagrant. And then from here on out, Border Village whenever I can swing it. I don't like this whole draw one Fool's Gold in each hand thing that's going on. That's not how these things are supposed to work. I also don't like this <laughs> your catapults lining up, but that's actually worked out pretty well with their enchantress. <laughs> so I bottom decked the expand and the other catapult, so they're going to collide, and that's not going to be the best. Actually, maybe that's fine. Maybe I expand the catapult, actually, into Border Village next turn. I, I'll see what my hand looks like, but I could consider that. That might be a way to get Border Village as fast. I think I want as many border villages as I can get, then a bunch of sheep dogs, and then I want to draw by playing artisan or expand and setting off a sheep dog chain. 
Did I buy Sheepdog already? Like, I really want them in my deck, but they're not doing anything for me really yet. I do have the Expand, but it's really unlikely that if I buy Sheepdog here, I will line it up with said Expand. So I think it's just Vagrant still for now. Please don't catapult me. If they don't catapult me, I would actually hit double border village here. Actually, well, the, the Enchantress kind of nullifies that anyway, doesn't it? Uh, unless I draw my other catapult? No? Okay. Okay, well, we're expanding the estate into something. Is there a case for Werewolf? Like, as far as draw goes, I think Sheepdog is just better. It's non-terminal when you activate it. Werewolf has the upside of... I mean, you can expand it into Province later. It can be an attack now. I'm pretty sure I just want Sheepdogs. They're taking a lot of silvers. I mean, one advantage the silvers have over the fool's golds, I suppose, is you can catapult them later, and then you're getting a curse attack out of it as well. So there, I mean, there, there's some there to that, but I mean, four is a lot regardless. I think you want that many silvers. This is not exactly the conditions under which I wanted to find that border village. I've got more terminals, but managed to find them. So I'm pretty sure we're going to have some kind of severe terminal collision coming up. What are we catapult resolving? This might actually be relevant if they catapult to silver. If it costs three more, each other player gains a curse. If it's a treasure, each other discards down to three. That's maybe it's awkward for me. Because <laughs> if they catapulted a silver, I could react the sheepdog to the curse, but it would draw before the discard attack hit, so I'd have to discard back down. So that, that doesn't work out the way I really want it to. Top decks is vagrant. Uh, I really want to hit six here. I guess the second catapult is dying. I really wanted the second catapult to die to the expand because then it comes to the border village. But I think here, I don't know if that what card is below the vagrant, but I don't want to take a risk that it's not a copper. Go go sheepdog. The fool's gold. It would have worked out, but uh, well, this is still fine. I got to curse them. And I think I either want a second expand or an artisan or something soon. I need cards that activate Sheepdog because my deck is a little bit finicky. In order to draw, I've got to find a border village, find some Sheepdogs, find a thing that triggers the Sheepdogs. And, you know, at the moment, that's really just the expand. This could be artisan here. <laughs> I think this is worth triggering. I mean, a, a lot of my sheepdogs are missing the shuffle, but I know I'm triggering a shuffle that's got border villages in it. Because we can draw. Wow, this is a lot of dogs. Maybe too many dogs. I think I should just draw through a bunch of this. Given that I know that I don't have a whole lot of draw down there. Rather just reset the shuffle to the greatest degree possible. And this is an ugly hand. I knew this deck was going to be somewhat unreliable, but that it, these last few shuffles have been not amazing as far as lining things up goes. You know what I should get? It's probably worth the terminal space. I, sh I should get two enchantresses. 
Uh, I didn't really think about this before, but given what I was just saying about uh, reliability, having a seven-card starting hand probably makes my deck a lot more likely to kick off than a five-card starting hand. And like terminal space is tight, and so you know spending on any chances isn't what you'd really want to do in the abstract, but that's probably worth it just for reducing the chance of dudding. I'm not sure the attack actually hurts. In fact, I think the attack is likely to be friendly. Just, you know, given the fickleness of the decks, getting to you know play a catapult or a sheepdog or something as a cantrip might reduce your chance of dudding. But I think getting two cards draw at the start of the turn seems like it would be real nice here. I can just I hear the dogs trying to get past the gate. <laughs> I might uh, have an impending breach any second now. Uh oh, have I been attacked? Have I guess fool's gold? Sad turn. <laughs> I think I'm pretty behind now. I'm, just, I'm, I'm really not doing so hot on the border village split, which is quite a concern. Please find second pool school. Thank you. Uh, I think I should keep drawing, right? I've got... A border village. I got border villages down there. I got sheepdogs down there, but I don't have either of my cards that would activate the sheepdogs, and so I think I'd rather draw through that if I can. Get back around to the expand slash the artisan. Chantress now. Sheep dog now. Another sheep dog now. Ideal. I don't know how idealistic this is, but I, ideally I could gain and play the enchantress mid turn, and that would be better than buying the enchantress now and then gaining the sheep dog mid turn. Um. Yeah. This this is not looking great. This is looking quite bad. In fact, the problem is I'm. Pretty severely behind on border villages. 5 3 is not a good split. 3 is not enough villages for my deck to work. But piles are also incredibly low. And so lowering border villages likely causes me to lose because I'm also behind in points. I got misery from the werewolf. I expect not to win this game. Nah. What is happening? Why does my deck not work? I don't know. Maybe Enchantress's earlier would have fixed this. Uh, I also, I don't know, my, my draws weren't bad early on, were they? Like the catapults worked out okay versus the Enchantress attack. I did not line up my pool's goals very often. Uh, I've, I think. That might have something to do with this. My plan for getting to six kind of heavily depended on... God, this, please, I just want to draw once. Oh, there's no point in drawing an expand off the top of my deck. Okay, here we go. This this turn could do something. But my, my plan for hitting six involved playing Fool's Golds, and I feel like I've had a whole lot of turns with exactly one Fool's Gold in hand. And that might have something to do with why I'm so behind on villages. I don't think I trigger this. Yeah. Oh. I should buy border village here, I think. Being ahead 6-3 on villages is just devastating. And they're ahead in points. They can afford to lower piles. Maybe a fourth full skull could have made a difference. I know I, I stopped at 3. 3 felt like it was enough. I thought 3 would, would lead to me hitting 6 more than it apparently did. 
I'm not sure if this was just uncharacteristically bad or if maybe three was just not enough fool's golds and a fourth one would have led to more fool's gold collisions. I still don't think the answer is silver. Silver still seems bad to me. Yeah, and Border Village seems right. You could take a duchy if you wanted to be safe, but I don't think that's required. They're just looking for a pile out here, it seems like. Okay, well, I can't afford to lower sheepdogs, I don't think. I'd love to take sheepdog there because it would activate. This is a whole lot of hands with exactly one fool's gold in them. <laughs> Playing the Enchantress, I think. And buying a fool's gold, I guess. Is that better than nothing? Maybe. Maybe there's a world where I gain and play a trade victor plus buy. I really need that last border village. I, I, I should take the last border village if I hit six because if that's not really reducing the number of games they need because border village comes with the free game. So they have they need three games either way. Taking the border village lowers the amount of money they need to do it a little bit. But I, I think number of games is probably the bigger limitation here than amount of money. And so I think if I could get that border village from my deck, I should. Buying an estate. See, the problem is my deck doesn't work. Border Village? Yeah. I needed to find this expand slightly sooner. I think I'll hit six here, though. Do I take trade route now? Probably not. I, don't, I can't play that. What do I take? Second Enchantress. Okay, wait, let me think. I've got three border villages total, right? Yeah. So there's a border village and an artisan down there. I should probably leave those there, right? I don't know if there's sheepdogs down there. I'll get one, two, three, four, five, six. There's no sheepdogs down there, though. But I, I still think top decking a border village and an artisan is about as good as I'm going to get, isn't it? Like, if I somehow knew those were the bottom two cards, I would love to draw here. I think I just take the last border village and a duchy. There's a very good chance I'd lose next turn, but that's risky you gotta run when you're behind. This is gonna be a good hand if they don't catapult me. Actually, it's a good hand they don't catapult me or enchant me. I need, I need to play all these action cards for this turn to do things. Uh, well, seeing how their turn is going so far, it's a pretty good chance I'm not going to get to play this turn anyway. If they dudded, could I win here? If I play the artisan, I could gain a sheepdog. If I, I don't think I could realistically win here. What did they trash? A silver. Yeah, that hurts. Those two, those two full skulls make up a big portion of my total payload. Oh, and an enchantress. Ouch. Uh, I think I let the sheepdog get hit. Yeah, this, this turn got so much worse. That, that was like a great starting hand, all things considered. Uh, but then those attacks really changed it up.
I'm thinking I just play an Enchantress here for next turn. This turn was never going to do anything regardless. Now I'm like severely over -trimmed. I don't. I didn't need three Enchantresses in my deck, but... I will. Owie. Please draw expand. Nope, we're not having a turn here, are we? My deck does not do things at all. Like, I keep getting excited when they have duds, but then I, I've just dudded every single time for like the last, I don't know how many turns. You just killed my dog? Jerk. Ooh, ha ha. Got him. Ha ho ho ho. Fell right into my trap there, didn't you? I actually maybe should not have played that last sheepdog. That triggered a shuffle, which means these sheepdogs missed the shuffle. I think I got a little bit too click happy. I think I should have just triggered the first two sheepdogs. Once I drew the expand, the sheepdog was going to trigger anyway. And I'd much rather have the sheepdog stay in the shuffle. I think that was actually a big mistake, wasn't it? Oh, well. And I don't think I'm going for a win here. I don't see myself realistically scoring nine points, do I? Yeah, not, especially not with Diluted. How, how would I win while Diluted? That seems unlikely. I don't know what I'm taking. I can't, I want Sheepdogs, but I can't afford to take more Sheepdogs because then piles just get incredibly low. Tools hold. Okay, so this is seven money in my hand. So I should probably play the catapult on a curse to hit eight. And that means I'm not playing the Artisan, I don't think, because I'd rather get an Enchantress down. Yeah. See, my, my deck could do things. I, I think if I had had a turn like that earlier, and my deck would have probably been much more likely to kick off. Like, you just get one good turn where you draw your deck, you line up an enchantress or two, and then thin out the junk. I think that just never happened, and I've kind of gotten trapped in a series of attacks and stuff that keeping me down. Trader is a great card at this point. It's now worth, it's like a sacred grove that always gives you flames gift, mandatory flames gift. I definitely would not mind taking a trade route. Maybe, maybe I should have taken that instead of that Fool's Gold. I'm super over-terminal, so I'm not sure if that's correct. Because uh, I've only got the four villages, but it seems possible. Their draws are looking pretty bad as well, to be perfectly honest. Like with six villages, they should not be dudding as much as they are. I think maybe they're just not lining Like here they got three villages and no draw cards. Not lovely. Please draw artisan or expand. It's neither. Yeah, yeah. This part is dutchy. Piles are awfully low. This is not going to be a good hand to get catapult attacked. Please do not attack me. Please. Please stop drawing cards. Yeah, I mean, this is like, like this is what the deck really should do more often than it did. Uh, I think they were also having pretty bad draws. I I smell attacks coming, or maybe there's a pilot coming actually. Yeah, they they might have the pilot here. They've got 
Do, do they have two? They don't have an expand or an artisan. So they actually don't have enough games to pile out, do they? So why don't they have an expand or an artisan? That's weird to me. So I actually might be in the clear here. A catapult would hurt me so much. But I expect them to play Trade Route, because that's their only games. Yeah. Province. I don't think it occurred to me until, like, just now that they, they're they really limited in the gains department. That seems like a big problem. Uh, this is a difficult choice. I think I play the Enchantress. I think I value the chance of having a good turn this turn a lot, and so I want to maximize my chance of activating the Sheepdogs. Okay, here we go, here we go. We got... We got a turn. There's a turn of Bruin. I think turn the estate into the duchy and the duchy, a duchy, one of the duchies, uh, or duchy into province. Are probably both very similar plays. Duchy into province is probably marginally better, right? I could trash the estate with a catapult at some point, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, can I go for a pile out? I turn copper into sheepdog, and then I. Artisan gain a sheepdog, and I'm still a gain short there, aren't I? I don't have a trade route in my deck yet. So I think we're just doing duchy into province for points. Good doggy. Trigger this? Probably, right? I got a bunch of draw left over. I was confused while I was waiting for them. They must have a fool's golden hand, though. Uh, so I think here, depending on what I draw, maybe, but probably I'm artisan gaining a trade route and trashing this curse. How much money do I end up with at the end of that? I've got 9 from fool's golds, 10, 11. Trade route brings that to 14. Not quite enough for double. Hmm. I would be really happy if I could draw both a Border Village and my last Enchantress. That is not incredibly likely, though. Maybe this shuffle actually wasn't worth triggering. There was more junk down here than I thought there was. I'm likely to die next turn, aren't I? Huh. Yeah, yeah, th this was a mistake. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have triggered this shuffle. I should have just... I don't... I don't know, maybe play Border Village, Top Deck, Sheepdog, gain Trade Route, and go from there. I don't know. Um, yeah, 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 this is a, this is gonna, I'm gonna dud next turn, and it's gonna be my fault. Oh well. Why is this 18? Did I draw a full school that I didn't account for? I don't know. Whenever I did that math, I assumed I had three full schools. I don't know if I did have three full schools at the time and drew one later, or if I just incorrectly read the number of full schools in my hand when I was doing that, but I didn't anticipate being able to double there. Uh oh, I don't like when they draw their deck. That bodes ill for me. It's also, it's not great that I have two of my villages right here, because this is going to be a dud, like... A, a likely scenario here would be, I play these two villages in the sheepdog, and then I just barely manage to trigger this shuffle, 
But now I've triggered the shuffle, and I've got two villages outside of the shuffle, which is not great. So I, I think if they were to discard attack me here, I should discard one of the border villages. Because I think this turn is unlikely to amount to anything no matter what. And so I'd rather not trigger a shuffle that has no villages in it. Uh, hmm. Sheepdog here might actually make some sense. Think about this. I believe there's an enchantress in these bottom three. I wish I knew what else was in the bottom three. I don't think there's a copper down there for me to catapult. I think I'm going to trigger this. I mean, I, I know I have to discard again, but I think this lets me potentially at least get in two cards. I, I can play both. I, I actually, I honestly have no idea what the bottom card is or whether I even want to trash it. Okay, I took a province and a fool skull. All right, yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure. Like, I lose here if they get a turn. Because I think with that fool's gold, they should be able to double province, and then that will seal the deal. Uh, I'm also in in dicey territory here, even if I get a turn, because. I need to draw a border village and a deck of 29 cards. It's looking like they're going to win here. Well, maybe that's not guaranteed. They have 11 cards still to get through. If they draw their deck, they should win. I'm not sure why they never picked up an expand. Like, I feel like they were just decisively winning this game this entire time. And now I feel kind of in it. And I'm pretty sure that's just because they were game limited. They have their only gains was a, a singular trade route, which is not great. Um, I mean, they still might be greater than fifty percent chance to win, but like I think if at any point in time they took an expand or even an artisan, they, they'd probably be much more certain because they're also not threatening to pile out as well as they could. Like, if they drew their deck one time with a trade route and expand, they could easily do Vagrant Double Sheepdog. So it looks like they are actually not drawing their deck, in which case, I'm not sure what you buy here. This Maya. Maybe to double. I don't, I don't, yeah, it's hard to say what you buy. I think you've got to score some points, because if you don't score and then I single province, well, now you're not even winning if you double. So I think at least at least one duchy is in order. Well, yeah, give, give me the, they've only got two gains. So like I think maybe they no, they can't even afford double duchy. Wow. Uh, I was gonna say like you you kind of want double duchy in their position to be safe because if they double duchy and I single province that loses to province duchy, which they could then do. They just take one duchy with only two gains in their deck. If I just take a single their province, they would need province double duchy to beat that, which they can't do. They can also just province here and just say, maybe I, I don't think I can win if uh, versus like the best play that I've got. And uh, play for a dud, which might work out here looking at my starting hand. I could I could totally see that, just provincing here. Because, like, one reason you might want a province is you know that your trade route, your only gain, is in this set of your cards, and so it's not coming up early at the very least. And so there's maybe some reason to worry that maybe you don't get all the way back around to your plus buy, and then you can't double next turn. So maybe you take the slightly risky line of just provincing and hoping that I fail to province. Which, actually, no, I, I could have just, like, expanded an artisan, so, like, that would have lost. I think maybe I maybe I still expand an artisan. If I draw three fool's golds, I win. I, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take a province. 
Even though I don't draw three full schools, if I hit five and I buy province duchy, that could win. Fool schools? Fool schools? Where, where are you at? Fool schools? Come on, fool schools? Oh. All right, we're, we're just drawing one fool school per turn until the very end. That was really sad. Oh. I, I think I'm going to take a state here. There's some fool scolds. Mm. So if I don't get attacked, this is eight in hand. If they catapult me, which they very well might, it would make a whole lot of sense for them to do that, then this gets trickier. I guess it, it doesn't, I should keep both fool schools so I can buy duchy. So it doesn't really matter which action card I keep at all. I don't have an enchantress coming in. No matter which action card I keep, it's going to get pigged by the enchantress. I could draw a fool's gold here, and that would win. Come on, fool's golds. Cooperate with me for, for once in this entire game. I think I got five total fool's golds, so two of these. I got like a 25% chance. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Nope. <laughs> Touchy it is. All right, we'll hit five again. I think this this might still be good enough. No. They they can win here. They they can win here. They just need Providence Duchy and a catapult attack is ten points for them. Because the catapult gives me a curse. And I mean they're getting close. They surely have more border villages in hand, right? There's four border villages somewhere in their deck. If they bottom decked all their border villages, that'd be really sad. If they just need to find a border village, a trade route, and a catapult, and that should be enough to win, I would think. Maybe it's not trivial for them to hit 13. Uh, they they died it. Yeah, they, <laughs> no one's having real turns here, it seems. Uh, top deck copper, I think. I hit five other way. Six isn't any better than five. I take the last duchy. And... One. That might be hard for them to win. Let's see. They've got a score. Yeah. Am I winning this game now? I mean, if I get a turn, I should win. I, I just buy Vagrant, and then that's a three pile. Province takes them up to 35. I think they might not have the gains to to win here. There's probably some theoretical world where they give out twice miserable with some of their werewolves and they buy province and then they catapult attack me and then they buy a state that's six, seven, eight, ten points. Even that's not enough. Now how how am I winning this? Maybe they just really needed more gains in their deck. I, I I feel like never picking up an expand just seems like such a mistake. Like I I'm just sitting over here dudding every single hand, and they seem to be drawing their deck relatively well most turns. I just I feel like their their deck isn't doing enough when they draw it. Like just. Seeing my turns, I would not expect in a million years to be winning this game, given how few of my turns have done anything of any value. I guess, I guess they're going to hunt for <laughs> trying to give me twice miserable for the two points, but it's not going to be in time. I don't know how I won that. Uh, but a win's a win. I'm glad that game is over. Turn 30. <laughs> I don't even want to say good game, because that was not that was not a good game. Understandable.
I, I would want to break too after that. All right, I'm back in three minutes or so. All right, I have returned. Seems like I'm the first one back. Okay, let's get this underway. Game four, I think. Pretty sure it's game four. Take a 3 0 for me. What have we here? I, I detest Minion. Should probably find room for it in my. Uh, dislike list, but it looks like minion might be significant here. This is reminding me of a game that I played versus oh, was I think it was versus Mercury four forty four F in quarterfinals. It was, yeah, it was definitely one of my championship games, but it was it had minion, it was a single terminal game, it had island, and it was not pleasant. I think it had Necromancer in it as well. So, I mean, you could draw here with Apprentice, but Apprentice plus Highway will get awkward. I also draw with Caravan. I think Minion's probably the best draw here. Just because it's not easy to thin your junk. I think the goal is to get a decent number of highways and then play a farmer's market each turn for plus buy, or actually a nomad camp might be better. And then eventually maybe you could double province off of that. For thinning, it's a apprentice can thin non-terminally, which is nice. You could also thin with zombie mason. Hmm. I mean, getting to five seems good. Could be Silver Nomad Camp and then Early Apprentice. Might be best. Could just open Sage Necromancer, which you can just thin directly with Zombie Mason early on. Maybe delay the getting to five part of that. Hmm. I don't think Sage No Med Camp sounds very good because the Sage is likely to draw nothing. Could be Sage Silver. I, I'm, I'm thinking Silver No Med Camp, then some Apprentices, and then some Minions and Highways. I want the plus buy anyway, so might not get it now, I guess. We have the 4-3, which changes that calculus a little bit. You buy Nomad Camp immediately. Yeah, I, I think, in my position, I think I would just buy Nomad Camp. You've got a 20%, not 20%, a 40% chance of hitting 5 immediately on turn 2 if you bottom deck an estate instead of a copper. And a 60% chance you hit 4, and you can just do Nomad Camp Necromancer or Nomad Camp Caravan is probably pretty fine. Yeah. I think I'd take the 4-3 here. It sounds a little better to me. But this is not a bad draw. I wonder, I think I should owl this Nomad Camp. I only need to hit 5. Yeah, I should owl this Nomad Camp. Even if I draw both my estates, which I didn't. If I drew both my estates, that means I would have 5 coppers on bottom, so I'd hit 5 either way. But owling gets me 2 cards further into my shuffle, which is good. And then I think Sage now. I think it is important not to take too many Sages, because Sages will actually become a very bad card later in the game. If you get enough Highways in play, like you find the Highways toward the top of your shuffle and the Sages at the bottom, well then Highway will actually cause Sage to just be a dud card in your deck, because there will be nothing costing three or more for it to draw, like after you've played three or more Highways. And that would be a bit of a pain. But in the short term, Sage seems to be a way to get through a bunch of these junk cards and find the Apprentice more often. And, oh my lord, look at the, oh, what, ha, 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 that doesn't look good. So they hit five, turn two, which is, you know, only 40% chance. 
Um, then they found the apprentice and the nomad camp, turn three, and managed to hit five, owling it. So they've they've drawn well into their deck. Oh no. <laughs> I guess this is fair. I think I had better early draws in some of the early games. I guess this is their turn to get busted draws. Um, but it ain't it ain't looking great. That that is like ideal draws right there. I feel like the minion looks early. I was I was thinking second apprentice, but maybe maybe minion's fine already. So I'd much, 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 much rather the Sage find my Apprentice than my Nomad Camp. I don't really value hitting four here all too much right now. And if I find the Apprentice, I might draw the Nomad Camp anyway, and then I have some chance of hitting five. Or I'll have a Silver down there that I could... Yeah, this was actually a, a, a good draw for me. I only had a one in three chance of finding Apprentice, because it could have found Silver or Nomad Camp. Uh, yeah, this is actually phenomenal. Uh, Okay, so I'm getting my own, some good draws on my own. I'm going to stick with Second Apprentice, I think. Here, I think I will take uh, Minion. <laughs> this seems fine. Let's see, what do I got down there? I should think about that. I don't think hitting seven sounds great. So I think I just owl this, because these cards are mostly junk. I think it's just a sage and a bunch of bad cards. Please, Apprentice attack me. Not Apprentice attack. Apprentice doesn't attack. Please, Minion attack me. Uh, actually, no matter what happens, this is not going to be the best shuffle ever because, like, this hand's going nowhere. But if they attack me, this hand also has two of my trash, all my only two trashers in it, and so I would just not be trashing the shuffle. I think I trash one and then owl the other. Hoping to hit five, maybe? Hey, hey, hit five. That'd be me. I think third minion. Probably minions until I have some semblance of deck control and then highways. Highway is a much better payload card than minion long term, but minion gives you a draw. I think all in all, they've had some pretty great draws. But I've had decent draws as well, and I'm player one. I think I'm behind, but not insurmountably so. A problem with this game, though, is going to be I think it's going to get relatively deterministic pretty soon. Like, there's a very clear maximum your deck can do. There's no terminal, or not no terminal, there's no villages. So you're playing one terminal, but it's going to be a plus buy card, which for both of us in Domain Camp. And so you're buying two things per turn. And so at some point, it gets to the point where if like, you, you don't dud, you buy your two things per turn, someone's going to get up to double provincing first, and then there's not a, a whole lot of ways to catch up from there, I don't think. And so I think within two or three turns, it'll probably become clear who's going to win. But there's no fancy gain and play stuff you can do here to get a win. I think once you get clean here, a dud will become pretty unlikely. All right, let me think if I can hit five, trashing copper, and then owling the nomad camp. I think the answer is yes, right? Yeah, I got plenty of coppers down there. I trashed two coppers. This should hit five. Is it highway time already? Or fourth minion? Hmm. 
Like, I want the highways more long term, but I want enough minions to not dud. So I'll take a fourth minion. Play it safe. This is uh, not a bad draw. Trash of copper, take two coins, discard. I should probably consider a Necromancer at some point. Like, I think eventually Apprentice is going to get in the trash, and then Necromancer will become a nice flexible card. I think I should... Mm, should I pitch here? I think so. I, I could play the minion first and hit a higher price point. But then that comes at the risk of, I'm triggering a shuffle that would have a lot of cards in it that are not minion. And that could be a concern. As far as dudding goes. Okay, yeah, here we'll go Highway Necromancer. And so I think from here on out, the goal is buy two highways for a while and then buy two provinces for a bit. That, that's it. That's the game. Not a lot of interest going on. You throw in some villages and this kingdom gets a lot more interesting. You could play with islands and maybe farmers markets and do a lot more. But with no villages, it's pretty straightforward. I'll take the two coins. I got more minions. Uh, can I kill the silver? Probably. That is a nomad camp on top, so I should just draw it. Discard two coins. Two coins plus buy double nomad, not, not, not double nomad camp, double highway. I don't, I think four minions should probably be enough for this deck. I, I, mean, I could consider a fifth one if needed, but. Like the, the deck doesn't do a whole lot. There is definitely a realistic world, I think, where you end up apprenticing provinces later in the game. Like you take an early points lead, but otherwise are gonna dud. Apprenticing a province is a great way to guarantee you get a good turn. And if it helps you double province and you otherwise would have singled, it kind of pays for itself while lowering provinces. Them hitting eight is definitely not good because they really need to get in on the highways and they're most buying one highway this turn. I think I've got the lead. I don't know how that happened. I think these last few shuffles seem to have gone better for me than for them. I wasn't looking close enough to say exactly how or why, but their, their turn seemed to have behind here. Uh, find a minion. Uh, yes, okay, good. I thought it revealed Nomad Camp, and I was like, oh no. But Nomad Camp currently costs two, so Sage just discarded it. It wouldn't have been the end of the world. If I, if I had drawn the Nomad Camp, I would have just zombie apprentice the apprentice, which is supposed to be a bit ironic, but would save my turn. And how many highways do I need? Probably a pretty big number of them, right? 
I don't have a whole lot of money in my deck. Not clear how many minions I'll be able to reliably play for money rather than draw once I start provincing. And so... I'm at five highways, which makes provinces cost three each. Uh, if I... The, the most highways I think I could ever really need would be seven. Because seven highways plus a nomad camp, double provinces. Six highways plus nomad camp plus a single minion played for money would be sufficient to double province as well. I, I could rest at that many. <laughs> These apprentices have overstayed their welcome, so I think it's time to kill them. It's like a zombie movie. The normal apprentice has become a zombie due to the zombie apprentice. Contagion is spreading. Uh, well, this sage is going to do nothing. <laughs> but that was predictable, so I think sage can die. So I have five highways. I think it makes sense to just start greening here. Uh, I think Province Highway, probably. I think I think five highways would be too few for me to be fully satisfied. But I don't think I really need seven all that badly. This, this leaves them with only four highways, which feels like an awkward number. Now they have to hit eight money to double province, which is not easy in this deck, I don't think. Or at least it won't remain easy once you start provincing. <laughs> Discard. And I think they should just clear off the top of the deck, which I can actually do with either Sage or Zombie Spy. Makes no difference which. Actually, Zombie Spy is probably better because it gives me the option to leave the highway on top. Which. Do I actually want that? I'm not sure I actually want that on top because they're going to minion attack me. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have actually. Maybe I should have just left them there. Because. Like, the Apprentice is kind of a junk card now. And I know they're incredibly likely to play at least one minion for a, a discard attack. So I wouldn't mind having a bunch of junk on top of my deck. I don't know. It's probably really marginal either way, but I think my ideal draw there would be play Zombie Spy, draw Highway, leave Apprentice on top and don't play the Highway. And try to top deck as much junk and as few good cards as possible. If they double here, I think the correct play is actually just to apprentice this province to make sure I don't dud. Because if I, if I buy two provinces, I win. So they, they don't double. They just buy two minions, which makes sense because I don't think they could afford to double. Uh, no need to get fancy. I think we're just going to do this the normal way. The plague spreads. Is this enough? This is enough for double, isn't it? Yeah. And this is not a bad starting hand. I don't I don't like seeing two minions on top, but I do like seeing two provinces on top. This should be enough. I can apprentice a province and then I'll draw eight cards and that should lead to a win.
even if I dud it, I think I'm enough in the lead that a full dud, like if I just pass the turn, I would still win, right? Because like two dutchies only brings them up to 12. Yeah, I could pass two full turns. I think I would tie because they would go dutchy, 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 province, province. And then that's only a tie. See, a full dud would be winning. And even a two, like literally not even buying a state duds would be a tie. I think I need to play one minion for money to afford to double. Yeah. GG. I, I hear disruptive dogs in the background. <laughs> We've had a decently large number of kingdoms with no villages. Last kingdom had no village at all. The Black Market game had no villages in the kingdom proper. And now we've got a third kingdom with no village to speak of. So again, I think relatively simplistic. You can build here, but the max you're building to is double province because the only plus buy is terminal. 5-2 uh, is actually makes this unclear. I think the build from 4-3 is seen as much more straightforward. So I'm, hmm, I think just salvage or nothing, probably. Like, I, I presume what we're doing here is buying a stack of alchemists and throwing a bank in and then double provincing consistently. I mean, that deck could run out of steam because it doesn't have true gains. If you're trashing a card every time to salvager, then... Buying two cards, you're only adding one card total per turn. And those coppers will eventually cause the banks to become weaker once you trash them. I still feel like it's going to be salvaged early on to kill these estates. And then maybe at some point I pivot to picking up a merchant guild, maybe. I could open potion as well. That would be really sad if I hit two potion, which is game losing sad. So probably just salvager first, and then a potion on the second shuffle. I think the goal here is just get a decent number of alchemists, get a bank, get provinces. I think I will strongly consider two potions here, actually. Because I sure don't want to lose the alchemist split. And... The second potion is actually not so bad with the bank. Make sure I don't bottom deck my alchemists, or I don't fail to top deck my alchemists. And then the potion actually does a little work powering up the bank, so it's worth something. It's like a copper at minimum. This does feel like a game that could be resolved pretty early by uh, good or bad draws in the first few turns. Potion now. And second potion already. The, the downside of taking the second potion this early is that they could collide and that could cause me to uh, actually <laughs> miss Alchemist by virtue of having too many potions. But I, I think that risk is worth it. Even if they collide, if they don't collide in an estate or do collide with Salvager and an estate, I still hit a sufficient amount. Uh, is a silver here better than nothing? That is not clear to me. I'm going to say no. This is fine. I don't get to trash, but I can use this to top deck the alchemist, which will then line up with the other potion that I've got. I wouldn't mind a quarry, I think. A quarry might... Is that true? I, th I think I would, yeah, I, I would take a quarry. A quarry makes it likely that I could hit double alchemist even on a turn when my potions collide. 
So and, and if on a turn where I hit four, but no potion, I think I'd like. Do I play the alchemist here normally? Not super clear. If I if I seal it, I still get to top deck the alchemist because that's a that's not an on play effect. So sealing it lets me top deck two alchemists for next turn. The playing it normally gets me a little bit further through the shuffle. Maybe finds the salvager, which I could then seal and get the same effect out of it. Hmm. So if I seal the alchemist, I have a 10 card deck with two alchemists on top. Then I have no potions in that deck. I think I want to draw. I have no idea whether this is better or worse. I think this is a suboptimal shuffle regardless because with no potions down here, this alchemist is going to miss, but whatever. They got the bank already. I think it's time for a quarry. So now my goal is to line up two potions, alchemist, salvager, quarry. And that is an ambitious goal. Well, I'm getting close to it. <laughs> so if I trash a copper, and then I play Copper, Copper, Quarry, Potion. I've got three money. Alchemist costs one plus Potion. Buy that. And then I have two left to get me a second four-cost card. Four-cost action card, but those don't look amazing. So I think I'd rather just seal this and top deck the Alchemist. Now that could be a mistake. Maybe Trashing Coppers is worth it. They're going heavier for the banks, but I feel like you need the draw to make sure the banks work. Like, my ideal deck, I think, only has the one bank in it and just consistently draws that singular bank. Promising already. Okay. Second potion? Nope, no second potion. So here, if I trash, I have five plus potion, which leaves me with four afterwards, which... Still not sure what I'm doing with four, to be honest. But I think I want to trash coppers at this point. And do I want a merchant guild at all? I think I'll take it. Reduces the risk that I bottom deck my plus buy, and I think at some point that might be better to play than the salvager. Might as well pick it up when it's free. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, look at this. Double alchemist. Beautiful. I've won this split pretty handily. So now it is acquire, bank, and start provincing. They've got a lead on the provinces. I think I'm fine because they don't have reliable draws, so they're not going to consistently do things, whereas my deck will do things. Hmm, so I got seven. I could trash a potion for 11 or a quarry for 10. That doesn't sound very great. Definitely buying a bank. Which means I'm not trashing a copper or else I couldn't afford the bank. I think this is just merchant guild then, because trashing quarry or potion doesn't particularly benefit me right now. Might as well take a copper. And buys. I think I should be good here if I just double from here on out. 
if I double, there's four provinces left, and then if they single province, then I could do province duchy, and then I think I'm probably winning the next turn. Maybe there's somewhere where they have a really good draw. Like they, they do have three alchemists in their deck, so they, maybe they line up two banks with their three alchemists, and then a merchant guild at the end of it, and then double, and then I think it's not so clear who wins. I'm just barely drawing, so I should probably trash with Salvager here. Seems like a good idea. So like my, my deck could fizzle out here. Like I, I think now I cannot draw my entire deck. I'm pretty sure I'm one card too short on draw. And I mean, I got two potions, so I can't bottom deck the potions. I'm guaranteed to top deck the alchemists. And I got two plus buy cards, so I can't bottom deck both plus buy cards. So I'm guaranteed to be able to double if I want to. But then, you know, the next turn after that, maybe it looks dicier. Okay, so. I think bottom cards are copper. I think just province duchy here, right? That takes me to 21, and then if they single, I province duchy a second time, then I'm fine. So. <laughs> I think playing Merchant Guild is better here. Bank up the coffers to be safe. I trash a copper, and then I play four coppers, two potions, and a bank. That's seven from the bank, four from the... That, that's not enough. Uh, I don't think I can afford to trash a copper and still hit uh, Province Duchy. I think we go Merchant Guild here. Province Duchy, and... I There's definitely outside world where they could double Province here, but I don't think I should play around that. That ain't double. I mean, they have to province here, right? Like, buying duchy doesn't help them because my deck is about as likely to double province as it is to be able to do province plus duchy. It basically comes down to me finding a plus buy card. I guess I could have bottom deck bank, and maybe there's a scenario where I could be able to hit that. Uh, yeah, I think that's the worst case scenario for me, probably, right? If I bottom deck bank, that still might be fine, because then I could... I'm not sure how much money I would have after salvaging the Merchant Guild. But it looks like it should be irrelevant. Yeah, double wins here, and this should be double. It's almost like the copper. That would have been bad. GG. Okay, yeah, so if I bottom deck bank, maybe I'm not getting there. GG. That was a nice fast game. I mean, 16 turns isn't fast turn-wise, but in terms of time spent playing the game, I don't think that took too long. Ooh, this looks interesting. Okay, what do we got? Draw is smithy, cavalry, or crypt. Plenty of villages, border village, hideout, wandering minstrel. Trashing is temple or replace. Only one buy. That's not true. You can get plus buy here. If you uh, replace a card into a cavalry, you're netting plus buy. Like if you buy cavalry, it's, it's like buy neutral. You're getting a, a free cavalry and otherwise still have one buy. But if you replace a card into a cavalry, you got plus one buy without spending a plus buy. So you could theoretically double province here just buying two provinces. Uh, I don't think that's, I mean, that could come up. I don't think it's like super important. I think most likely you don't need a huge amount of money here. You want to use replace for a lot of gains though. And then that'll be your main payload is replacing things. Uh, I really want replace. 5 2 would be amazing here. Or 2 5, either way. Trashing estates into mills is nice because it's a victory and an action. So you'd be cursing them. I'm thinking just Smitty Silver. Uh, seems likely to hit six for Border Village Replace. Could be Mill Silver. Mill's really likely to get you to five. 
Uh, six is better than five, of course, because Border Glow is not a bad card to have, but Mill is going to be like a high reliability. At least you get five and get a place in the deck. Uh, don't think Hideout or Temple look super important as far as trashing goes. I think you want to replace the estates, and then you can crypt the coppers. Uh, yeah, so the three is definitely the silver. I, I think I'm feeling Smithy over Mill. Like, turn one Smithy would just be amazing. Not turn one. Turn three Smithy. Uh, Smithy? Uh, well, <laughs> it's six anyway. <laughs> Even without the, the turn uh, three Smithy. So I think this is Border Village replaced. Is that true? Hmm. The awkward part here is... I'm going to play that Smithy, and it's going to like just barely trigger a shuffle. And there's going to be this question of what I want in that shuffle. Maybe it's actually Crypt already? It feels early for Crypt, but... Like, I'm almost certainly... If I put a Replace into that shuffle, I'm not replacing anything of value, because there's no estates down there. I think this might already be Crypt, and I'm likely hitting like four or five plus a Crypt in hand, and then maybe you buy Cavalry to get an even bigger Crypt playoff. Yeah, I think, I think it's Crypt time already. I didn't expect Crypt to be the first five, but I just think the way the shuffle lined up, Replace actually looked like not the most important thing to buy there. Oh, they, they also went for early crypt. Okay, I, I respect you, my Good choice. You have good taste in cards. For, I would have loved to draw the silver and buy a replace here, but it was not meant to be. This is just Wandering Minstrel. And this turn, I think I'm buying cavalry here. Uh, because if that cavalry draws me additional treasures, I'd be very happy to put extra coppers aside onto the crypt. And then I need to figure out how to get a replace into my deck, because that's going to be an imminent priority. I could just buy a replace now. That is a very reasonable thing to do, just buy a replace here. If I cavalry, I have one money left. What's the chance I draw four money? Pretty low, right? There is four coppers down there and a smithy. Maybe I should just take the replace. I just, <laughs> I, have, I have this nagging sense of dread because I, I have a dog gate between the rooms of the house. The dogs are confined to one. I, just, I hear the gate rattling worrisomely loudly. They're trying to escape. <laughs> uh, I, I should probably just take the replace now. I want to get that into my deck and I worry about hitting five if I set aside a bunch of coppers and then Trigger a shuffle, it's got a bunch of estates in it. Uh, here, I'm probably taking the silver and then buying cavalry. I'd love to draw a village and a, an estate. If I want to... Like, this is just not a good hand otherwise. But it could become a very good hand really fast if I were to find Minstrel of Border Village. Never mind. But uh, at least I got good cards on top. Probably just mill here, get in the curse attack. Could have also been on Wandering Minstrel, I think would be totally reasonable. Definitely use a lot of villages here. Yeah, they took a Minstrel. The, the, the curse is something. But I, I think in the face of a lot of curse attacks, probably you would then take a hideout to deal with the curses, and that like would not be bad at all. So maybe maybe Minstrel actually is the better choice. Okay, so... I kind of want a second border village, but this doesn't work out quite right. If I discard a state copper, then I'm hitting five. Uh, I could replace an estate and do a cavalry and maybe hit six if I draw a copper off of it. Then I'm top decking bad stuff, and there's some chance I don't even hit six from that. I could discard two estates, replace the cavalry, and then I get two border villages, but then I've 
trashed a cavalry, half an other horses that had not trashed us, Dave. Yeah, I, I think this is just going to be, we're going to skip the border village for this turn. Suffice with five. I should also think about tower. Tower is definitely going to make weird random pile out of the big threat. Cavalries could run, replaces on border villages could run. That's probably how this game is going to end. Is cavalry replace border villagers? Maybe minstrel as well is going to run really low, and then someone's going to score more points off of tower. Seems like a likely conclusion. <laughs> okay. Hmm. What do I do here? I think replace the estate into border village cavalry, then I play two cavalries, and then I've got... Oh, hmm. Well, not border village, just cavalry. <laughs> I can't replace the estate into border village. Um, the thing is, if I turn the estate into cavalry, draw the cavalry, I play that, and I crypt six coppers, I'm just like, extremely overdrawing my deck next turn. But it's actually fine, I think. If I had, I buy a border village replace here, then I can do a ton of gain and play and gain a bunch of replaces, and then that, that sounds actually wonderful. Oh, I, I, I didn't even think of it. I got two buys if I want them. Do I want to use this extra buy? Probably not, right? I mean, Border Village replaced still sounds like the best buy. You can buy a copper, work towards that copper tower points. Hmm. Yeah, it's just Border Village replaced the end, right? Get fancy, buy an estate or something as an extra replace target. That might not be unreasonable. Do I want an estate? Probably shouldn't take an estate. Where's the other crypt stand? All right, I got one more turn in the other crypt. So I think this turn is likely, as much as possible, I just want to replace cavalry and a border village, replace a bunch, and then lots of gain and play should ensue. I should be careful because next turn I will need more draw than I currently have. Like this, this deck has four horses in it, and so if I add fewer than four horses because I've replaced all my cavalries, I'll have less draw next turn. Plus, I will have two more coppers in the next deck because they there'll be at least or a copper and a silver, I guess, um, because of this crypt. So I should be careful to add additional draw for the following turn. I'm going to overdraw Hella here. But that is not going to hold true. Time to do gaining and playing. Border village replace. Should I get a crypt at the end of all this just for these two treasures? Maybe. Border village, replace. So I need to figure out how to add draw. What if I turn curse into a state and then a state into cavalry and then play it? Maybe I can play what maybe can I do horse into replace? Then play border village, then curse into a state, then a state into cavalry and play the I think that works out, right?
I should not discard, I think. Well, actually, hmm. If I just turn a state into cavalry, I can play the cavalry by silver, I guess, is better than nothing. If I discard the copper and the silver, I'm top decking a treasure, but I got a 50 50 shot of hitting four, and four is a better number than three. So we're going to take a gamble. Oh. I didn't. I, I don't know why I thought that was 50-50 shot. There's a 33% chance I drew the hand I wanted, which was uh, Cavalry Silver. I didn't even think about bottom deck the Cavalry. I think I should resolve this by buying another Cavalry. I, just, I want horses on my deck, I think. I mean, if I had six, six would be great. I'd buy Border Village Cavalry, and then I guess at least with 50% odds, get four horses in the deck, but no such luck. I'm likely going to have to buy some cavalries to make this turn work, but that's not a big deal. Slash replace to gain some cavalries. I expect them to buy cavalry here, or border village gaining cavalry. They've got a lot of treasures in their deck because they got nothing on the crypt, but I think they're about to resolve that here. Their crypt is either in their hand or on their deck, and they've got all their coppers in play. So they'll get that crypt down with all the coppers on it, and then their deck will be nice and squeaky clean, and then I should be careful about pile outs. I think that there's a very high likelihood that I just pile out this turn, though. With a good draw, I think Border Village is three replaces three cavalry sounds imminently doable. Crypt versus Cavalry. I'm not sure which is more important to replace. They, they probably all get trashed in the end. I guess in a world where I fail to draw, I'd rather have the Crypt still in my hand to set up for the following turn than the Cavalry. I do have a smithy in here somewhere, right? I'd like to find it. Well, we're cutting it close on draw here. Okay, now I think this should be guaranteed. Cavalry into place, cavalry into replace, cavalry into replace, and tower points as expected. All right, that's the match, I think. Pretty sure that's the match, yeah. Nice 6-0. Uh, Go, go, USA.